Hello, welcome to Catholic Courses. I'm Dr. John Cutterback, Professor of Philosophy at Christendom College, and I will be your professor for this course. We begin with the opening words of Aristotle's great work, The Nicomachean Ethics. Every art and every inquiry, and similarly every action and pursuit, is thought to aim at some good. And for this reason, the good has rightly been declared to be that at which all things aim. Every action and choice is thought to aim at some good. And for this reason, the good has rightly been declared to be that at which all things aim. These famous lines are one of the early expressions of the great Western understanding of human action and of goodness. Here we have a fundamental assertion about human actions. Human actions always aim at some good or end. In other words, human actions spring from human reason, and human reason discerns some good, something desirable, something to be achieved, and acts toward it. But immediately, we must give a qualification. To be more precise, human actions always aim at something perceived to be good, or taken to be good. The ends or goals of our actions are not always truly good. And here we have the setup for the great drama that is the moral life. As beings that act from reason, we are responsible for our actions. Nobody holds a tree responsible for what it does. The great drama is, do we act toward what is truly good or not? In either case, we are responsible and will reap the fruits of either truly good actions or of truly bad actions. But if there's a real distinction between good and bad actions, where does this come from? Here is an issue at the root of the very possibility of there being something called ethics. In a word, this is the issue of whether there is an objective standard of good and evil. A hallmark of contemporary culture and much contemporary thinking is that there is not an objective standard of good and evil. In other words, what is good for you might not be good for me. Fidelity in marriage or protecting innocent life might be good for you, but it's not necessarily good for all, we are told. Now, if there is no objective standard of good and evil, then there really is no such thing as moral philosophy or ethics. For all that we could really do is describe how people act or how people think they should act. But we could not discover a universal truth about how people should act. And that is what ethics or moral philosophy is about. We might note a couple of reasons why relativism about the human good, in other words, holding there is no objective universal standard, always has a certain appeal. First, relativism appeals to our concupiscence, in other words, to our selfish desires. If there's no objective standard, then, it seems, life will be easier. There's no standard to which I must conform my actions and desires. This always, unfortunately, has a certain appeal. Secondly, there is, in reality, a great divergence in opinions out there in the world around us about what is good and evil. And this seems to indicate that there is no objective standard. Consider this line of thinking. If there were some universal and objective standard of right and wrong, good and evil, 
then certainly there would be more universal agreement on what that standard is. But experience shows much disagreement. This is a reasonable line of thinking. We can understand how people can think this way. Again, why wouldn't there be more universal understanding if there is this objective standard that all should be able to see? Ultimately then, here is the fundamental issue. Is there an order that is given by which we are normed or measured? Or are we the measure? Is man the measure of all things, as the Greek sophist Protagoras claimed? Put otherwise, do we first of all discover what is good and evil, or do we create or determine ourselves what is good and evil? Aristotle is well aware of this issue, and he refers to it at the very beginning at the outset of his work. For Aristotle, the objectivity of good and evil is rooted in the very objectivity of human nature. It is clear from experience that human nature, as well as the rest of the natural world, is a given. It is truly something wonderful to behold, to discover. To claim that good and evil exist only according to the determination of differing human desires and viewpoints is as absurd as claiming to be the makers of the natural world. More specifically, let's consider an apple grower. He can either recognize that apple trees have a given nature, or he can act as though he determines what constitutes a flourishing healthy apple tree, the wise cultivator of the land, always looks first to discover the wonderful complexities of the natural world. And then, and only then, does he exercise his role, which calls for real creativity in acting in accord with nature. Note here how I want to say something about the word determine. The apple grower does not determine the nature of the apple tree. In other words, he must first discover it. The nature of the apple tree is what is given. It is the foundation for what he then proceeds to do. Now he does, in a sense, determine whether the apple tree will actually flourish or not by what he does. But note that's different from determining what apple tree nature is. He must first discover the nature of apple tree and have that be the foundation for what he does for his work, which will then determine whether it actually flourishes in accord with its nature or not. Right here then, at the beginning, we see that a study of ethics, and more importantly, the pursuit of the human good life, requires humility. The willingness to see things as they really are, as they have been given to us. We must be willing to realize there is a beautiful human nature that has been given to us, which we first of all discover. We do not determine what it means to be human. We are responsible for determining whether we will act in accord with what we have discovered. Again, we see the distinction we don't determine what human nature is. We discover what human nature is. And then the big drama is, will we determine well our activities in accordance with what we have discovered? <music>